Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California, where it is going to be a beautiful, hot little Monday. And I hope you guys have a great start to your day. So what are we going to talk about? Bitcoin's price targets. We're going to talk about some of the top altcoins, whether we're bullish or bearish on this market. And really, everybody wants to know why Bitcoin has been down over the last week or so. Well, I'll give you a couple of reasons. You know, inflation came in higher than expected at eight and a half percent. And then Powell came out at the Fed meeting and says, hey, instead of raising rates by a quarter percent, we're going to start hiking rates at a half a percent for the next few months and try and beat down inflation uh, sooner than later. And uh, you also have the China lockdowns and Putin saying, look, he's done negotiating peace talks. And the dollar here, and by the way, you know, NASDAQ's been down significantly, along with the S&P. And the dollar's been skyrocketing, heading up towards our target of 103. Um, I do suspect we get a pullback from there. And that's, well, the pullback on the dollar is the bullish news, but the rest of that, that's the bearish news. And really, it's funny how the whole news narrative can just change on a dime so that's why i think it's easiest just to look at the charts and uh following up on our analysis from last week we said hey look as long as thirty nine thousand holds there's a good chance for a bounce um but if thirty nine thousand breaks the next target down is going to be 37 for a small bounce and then likely we come down and test thirty four thousand. um but again, the big thing I want to speak about today is this 45% move that has been baking on the five-day time frame. And I'll just pull that up for you really quick and widen the screen out so everybody can see nice. So we had our last five-day closure. Excuse me. Uh, the five-day is going to close today in seven hours and 53 minutes. And look, let's look at trend momentum and volatility, right? So we've got um, slightly higher highs. And if we can put in another higher low here above 39,000, that will look good for um, a little bounce. However, we've got momentum that will remain to the downside as long as we're closing below 46,000. So momentum is turning down and volatility is extremely low. Uh, it looks like we're just about to regain the exponential. Um, I really won't call it a move until, you know, I'd say we're back, you know, ticked up above 20% here. Um, but we've been going over this for the past few months. Every time five-day volatility or BBWP has gotten to an extreme low level, you know, the result has been an explosive move of no less than about 45% in either direction. Um, so what do I think needs to happen here? Well, um, we need to hold 30, 39,000 on the daily. First of all, today, um, actually, we, we really need to cross back up above 40,516. Um, I'd say, if not today, by tomorrow, uh, for this thing to hold itself up. And how would we do that? Well, we hold 39,000 today, and then we confirm this as a local low by really just uh, closing back above this high, you know, somewhere above the above 40,000 tomorrow. And that would give us our three drives of hidden bullish divergence coming back from this point right here. So we've got one, two, three, that would be three higher lows, and that should give us a shot up to at least 41,700. I do believe we are in for a bit of a bounce before um, the market sinks lower. However, my opinion will change if we close anywhere below 39,000, more conservatively 38,700, and I'd expect those lower targets to get hit. Now on the opposite side, um, if Bitcoin can close back above 44,000, uh, that's going to look good for at least a move back to the top side of the range at 48. 
And I would expect um, a small pullback from there. But um, that's it for the daily time frame. I mean, let's just see if there's any. Uh, so we got hidden bullish divergence that could play out. Um, momentum is to the downside. And again, volatility extremely low. Um, looks like this next move should get us, you know, the next daily move somewhere around 20 to 25%. And um, how does that play into the five day? So if we get a 25% move to the upside, would that get us above 46? That sure would. So kind of a big pivotal, pivotal, pivotal moment in the market. This move has been baking for some time. We said, hey, it's probably going to come early next week. Um, and so let's take a look at the weekly. How did the weekly close? Um, that doesn't look too good on the weekly for Bitcoin. Kind of an indecision candle. Taking a move slightly lower, but you can see that um, the selling volume is declining here. And we still have a chance to put in another higher low, which would give us, would that give us any more? divergence to play out here let's see so going back from this point here so price is making higher lows going on here that would be three higher lows um, and yeah so that that does show me hey look we might Come play out that downside move, maybe to 37 to 34 before Bitcoin picks itself up. Um, we want to see that third drive of hidden bullish divergence. And right now we only have two, one, two on the weekly. And we are getting back into the bearish control zone. So we'll see on the shorter term time frame we are getting a little bit of a bounce right now and i would expect this bounce to uh, get extended up to probably around forty thousand one hundred. and why is that well we've got three drives of hidden bullish divergence so as we got one two three lower lows and that's a confirmed lower low and then we got um uh, one, two, three higher lows on RSI. As you can see, these lows are getting higher. Okay, and three drives of divergence typically gives you a shot. To, we already hit the first target at the 21. Uh, second target is 40,200. And um, yeah, I would just be on the lookout for another lower high. Anything, you know, below 40, call it 40, uh, 43,000 is just going to be another lower high and, you know, very likely uh, some more continuation to the downside. Let's take a look at some of the underlying market dynamics. We've got the fear and greed index coming in at a 23. Uh, we've got, so we're still in the extremely fearful zone. We've got open interest coming in at 12.8 billion. So uh, taking a small leg down. And then we've got the leverage ratio, which is uh, continuing to climb higher and kind of intersect price action right there. So market is over leverage right now. It always has, <laughs> well, it, it has been for quite some time. We would probably do for a little bit of a leverage reset. What about on the lower term time frames? So we got declining, declining volatility as momentum is going up. So it looks like more of a corrective bounce. Um, however, I would say if we can, we could take out, we could take out 40,000, uh, very likely we get that move up to maybe 40,500 and uh, volatility needs to tick up as well. And momentum will remain to the upside as long as we're closing above 38,500. So that's it for Bitcoin. Let's check out some of our altcoins here. Ethereum kind of taking a kick in the pants here. Um, really drooping over here quite a bit. 
And um, again, it looks like we're going to get some hidden bullish divergence. Why? We've got one, two. This could be the third higher low. It's not confirmed yet. We need another daily closure above this low. And then I would say we get a shot at least up to 3,100. But here's kind of the line in the sand um, on this daily analysis for Ethereum. As long as we are closing below 30, call it 32,300, um, we're just making lower highs. We can get back above the 618. I'd say we probably get a shot to 3,500, um, but that's on a daily time frame. Let's take a look at the five day. And the five day is looking pretty sad as well. Five days is going to close in seven hours and 45 minutes. This is a bearish candle on uh, relatively low volume. So probably get slight continuation after the next uh, closing. But I don't like that it's closing back below this kind of breakout area at 3000 bucks. We need to get back above 3000 and really 3200 for it to make a difference. Uh, what does it look like on the monthly here? And where are all my indicate? Where do there they go? Uh, on the monthly, and we all are closing the month here in five days and eight hours. And um, you know, could this just be a little backfill, possibly? Um, anything on the two month, holding the nine, the three month, and you know, could it be a top? I don't know. It's really news newsworthy you know i think what we need is nasdaq and smp to pick themselves up by their bootstraps but let's take a look at the monthly on nasdaq and here's what i would say is you know any kind of a closure on the month below um thirteen thousand is probably going to give us a shot down to ten thousand seven hundred and that would look very bad for uh, Bitcoin itself. So I'd be keeping an eye on NASDAQ. Um, and just, again, wrapping up Ethereum here. On the four-hour shorter-term time frame, again, it does look like we're getting a bounces across the board off of some hidden bullish divergence and probably a target back up to somewhere around 3,000. Um, but here's, again, the biggest... Hope is that the dollar is putting in a top here and, you know, volatility is turning up. We're crossing down with any kind of a closure on this next four hour below 101.67. And um, that would look nice if the dollar can come back down to about 100 bucks or even, you know, lower somewhere around 99. That would look good for Bitcoin getting the next bounce and, you know, at least a shot to the top side of the range. Um, let's check out Luna, which is holding it up here very nicely. Again, one of the strongest altcoins in the market. And uh, starting off with the shorter term time frame, I would say any kind of a four hour closure back above 95 is going to give us a shot to the top side of the range at about 100 bucks. If we can close back above 100 on the four hour, I'm targeting 107. Um, let's take a look at what is going on with Luna right now. And this looks like a good setup for some short-term continuation. And why do I say that? Well, one, we've got momentum turned to the upside. We've got volatility ticking up from a very low level. And we've got some hidden bullish divergence. Uh, it's almost, almost there. I don't know if you can quite see this, but, um, this would be one, two, three, four drives, but this is kind of a slightly lower low. Um, so, you know, close enough is close enough. And um, alongside RSI making one, two, three, four um, lower lows. So we got higher lows there, right? Price making lower lows in RSI. So that's just regular bullish divergence. What am I talking about? And um, yeah, so we're getting out of the bearish control zone and 
momentum coming up, volatility coming up. And it looks like uh, Luna might uh, might pick itself up by its bootstraps. How, how about on the daily? And on the daily, um, just taking a look at the fibs here. If we take a look at our fibs here, uh, looks like we're heading back up to the not 0.5 at 96. Um, if we can get above there, next target is 102, above 102, and we re revisit the highs. So 102 on Luna. And to the downside, if, uh, if we take out 87, I think we'll revisit uh, 77 to 75 bucks. And um, that would be alongside Bitcoin probably breaking down. Um, so do I think we're more likely to get a little bounce today or than not? Yes. Uh, the question is, does the bounce hold? And do we get over the critical regions we need to get over? Which again, on Luna, it's going to be 102. Um, and to the downside, you know, 87. So, and this all would start with a daily closure back above 96 or even, you know, call it 90, 95 and 95, 50. And I believe we'd at least get up to uh, 102 and then it's lower, high or not lower, high or not. Right. Um, Cause right now we still are baking in. On the daily time frame, we got higher highs and, you know, this is still a higher low. Um, so I would say, Luna, give it a shot to go to your last all time high. Um, what else do want to people what else do people want to look at? I know a lot of people are wanting to look at Solana, which is broke down pretty, uh, you know, pretty bad. Um, and we are getting a silver cross to the downside. Um, are the divergences playing out? If we can hold, if we can hold this guy, uh, we'll have one, two, three, one, two, three drives of bullish divergence, right? So price is making higher lows. RSI is making lower lows. Again, So we got lower lows in RSI and that's one, two, three, almost working on the fourth one here. But, you know, I don't usually like that signature when we get kicked out of the bullish or bearish control zone and then we get shot right back into it. Typically not the greatest sign. Um, however, you know, if um, the dollar can pull back and NASDAQ and S&P can pick themselves up, Bitcoin picks itself up. I think Solana has a chance. And more specifically, uh, Solana needs to get back above, let's say, one twenty-three. Uh, and you know, the first objective would be one thirteen. Um, I do believe we're going to get some kind of a bounce here. Could be wrong. It's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Just offering up my opinion. And hopefully you can play that in with your own market strategy. Um, what else do I want to take a look at? So, yeah, if, if, if we do break this support line at 98, uh, I do believe uh, we're coming back down to 79 bucks. Um, let's take a look at Comp. Comp, another one uh, that had a very nice rally coming in uh, as Bitcoin rallied. And, you know, I like this one around 100 bucks. Again, if it comes back down there, I think it's a great product. Um, however, it looks like, again, if the market can hold itself up, we're going to have bullish divergence pretty much across the board uh, on all markets. Let's see if NASDAQ has any bullish divergence. So, um, look, we had the one, two, three drives there, and we got a shot up to... 15,000, but is that just another lower high preceded by some lower lows to come in the, uh, in the interim? So what am I looking for? So correlation between this point and these points right here, if we can get a fourth higher low, that'll be four drives of hidden bullish divergence. Yep. So as you can see, coming from this point correlated here, Right, we've got four potential higher lows, while the RSI 
from this point here, again, would have, uh, oh, would it have one, two, let me re reanalysisize that. Otherwise, it looks like it might come down a little bit lower to get that fourth drive. Yeah, if I had to call it or not, I'd say NASDAQ probably comes a little bit lower. Um, and that's unfortunate, but um, hey, I don't have a crystal ball here. I'm just giving an idea of what I'm looking at. Um, and momentum here is crossed to the downside. We'll cross up above 13,328. So we're, we're pretty much sitting on the edge. Maybe we need a good piece of news like Elon Musk purchasing Twitter today. That would be great if you ask me. Um, I think he's more in line with freedom of speech. And uh, I think he, he gave Twitter an offer that uh, basically if uh, they decline the offer, they will be being negligent to the shareholders. So. They pretty much have to take this one if you ask me. But I'm banking on a bounce here, um, liking what I'm seeing with some of the altcoins. How about XRP? XRP looks like we're coming down to 59, 60 cents again. Um, XRP not holding it up. ADA, same thing. Looks like coming back down to 78 78 where uh, volatility is ticking up from a low level momentum is crossed down we do not have will we have any divergences playing out i don't know i you know these guys are going to do whatever bitcoin does but a little bit more right uh to to well more to the downside less to the upside and that's my opinion um what do i got here Tezos, another uh, another great project, I think, uh, long term. You know, it's been beat up pretty bad here over the last six months. Um, however, however, we've got a slew of higher lows on the daily here. And I'm willing to bet we've got some divergences. No, do we? From this point... Coming back from here, and we got higher lows there. Yeah, that doesn't work. Um, no, no divergences playing out. So, I did have this drawn out as a ascending triangle. Looks like we are breaking it to the downside, or the downside target B. Oh, down to 222. That revisit the lows there. Um, let's see on the five day, how the five day close. And five day close is today. Uh, to cross up, we need to get back above 345. Again, volatility is extremely low on this asset. And momentum is to the downside. So as long as we we're below 345 on the five day, I, I would expect that measure move to get hit somewhere around, um, what were we saying? 220, is that right? Yep. So uh, Tezos, not so fun, but uh, still, still a long-term holder, um, hodler. Uh, should I say and look at this I mean these are higher lows coming back all the way from you know March 2019 so this guy's been you know it's been up and down up and down but um, I still like the project like the technology anyways I'm getting a little long-winded today I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching remember we aren't financial advisors it's not financial advice if you did enjoy uh, the daily analysis Go ahead and click the like button, subscribe, and you'll get reminded of all the future uh, daily videos we put out um, and other resources we drop. And also, if you are interested in learning about incorporating Bitcoin in or other cryptos into your IRA,
There is a link in the description below. Thanks and have a blessed day.